Star Country 96.9. Hey, we have Dr. Craig DeLisi from Titus Regional Medical Center on the phone. And, Doctor, guess what? We are joined by the valedictorian and salutatorian Pittsburgh High School. They are in the studio as we honor their achievements. <laughs> Natalie Garza and Caitlin Beheimer are with us. And guess what, Doctor? They're going into the medical profession. Oh, very nice. I know. Are you going to warn them? Congratulations to both of them. Congratulations. Are you going to warn them away from it? Are you going to say, come on, come join the fun? No, I'll I'll recruit them. No, certainly. (laughs) Welcome there. uh, Join in. Uh, Nice. And I actually had them prep some questions. Natalie, your question for Dr. Greg DeLisi. How did you stay motivated throughout the process of becoming a doctor? Mm, Because it's a long process. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, that's a good question, Natalie. So I decided to become a physician while I was in college. Didn't didn't grow up wanting to be a doctor or necessarily thinking that's what I was supposed to do. And probably around my sophomore year started to sense maybe a calling from the Lord to do that. I felt like it was a way I could really serve Him and use talents and gifts I had and to, to care for others. And and I remember when I was about 20 making that decision and, and, and having to, at that point we didn't, didn't have to declare majors right away, so I, I declared when I was about a junior and, and changed my major into to pre-med and started that journey, not knowing if I would get to do it or not, but hoping that someday I could take care of patients over time and build relationships and use it as a way to minister to people. And, and you know, all these years later, it's... It's been just that, and I think for me, what helped with the motivation was really just sensing that that it was a calling, you know. And mm-hmm. I do think healthcare is like that, and and certain um, aspects of healthcare, especially being a physician or being a nurse, really is something you don't turn off. It, it, you know, you're you're sort of that even when you're not working. And I really just had a strong sense of calling. So even during the harder things and the mundane things and lots of tests and studying and sleeplessness, I, I kind of felt motivated by that very thing, and just really a love of, of people and, and patients. And and I, honestly, uh, truly, that's still what motivates me today, uh, to be honest. During the marathon of going through all the education, did you ever question your decision to go into the medical profession? Uh, I don't If I did, I don't remember that. I mean, there were some really, really hard time. You know, when I did it, there, it was before they had rules and restrictions on hours and schedules. And so mm-hmm. there was some, I mean, almost impossible, you know, kind of, you know, we had, you know, 36 hour shifts and, um, we're, and then you'd go home and sleep for eight or 10 hours and then do it again. And, and so there were probably times when I do just extreme physical exhaustion or, or not feeling like I could do some of those things, or even, um, you know, just the amount of information we had to ingest and learn. But I don't really think I ever felt like this wasn't for me or I made a mistake. And really, again, it was just because of a clear sense of calling. You know, mm. It wasn't something I just sort of randomly picked or said, hey, I think this would be fine and I could probably be a doctor and that would be cool. I mean, I really sensed the Lord was saying this is, this is for you and the way you can, can, can serve me. And, and because of that, I don't, I don't recall that I ever did. We're talking with Dr. Craig DeLisi with the Family Care Center, Titus Regional Medical Center. Caitlin, what's your question? Um, what's your favorite part about being a doctor? Oh, that's a great question. Um, my favorite part really is, the, and it sounds kind of trite, but it's really the patients. You know, my, my favorite aspect is just being one-on-one in a room with the patient and and handling whatever they're there for. And, you know, it's really an amazing, and, and every field is different, and I think specialists don't get to enjoy this as much as I do in family medicine, but is really just a trust that's given to you by patients that's not earned. It's just it's just usually given that allows them to open up themselves to you in ways that they really probably don't to other people. And you're you're allowed just an intimacy into mm-hmm. their lives and their world that is an unbelievable privilege. And to get to to care for them and, and you know I learned really quickly that you know, even though we mainly study the body in school. Um, you know, people are coming with issues uh, of their mind and of their spirit, and and really, I think our role is to care for all three, and that's how God made us. You know, his body, mind, and spirit. And I just so enjoy and feel incredibly privileged and blessed to get to enter into that um, with people every single day, and and 
it's it's rich beyond belief and you know it's hard too and and there's lots of things about it that I could mention that are difficult but I feel like those are all overcome by just the the joy that I get in receiving from them and just having glimpses into their lives and especially over time because I've been in this community over two decades now of, of knowing people and then there's just a different level of depth and and closeness that develops. That's Dr. Craig DeLisi and I know you were talking about patients right then and how important they are, the most important thing, really, in your practice. And they're queued up, waiting to come in to see you this morning, I understand. So we're going to free you up. That's Dr. Craig DeLisi with the Family Care Center, Titus Regional Medical Center.